What's up guys, thanks for stopping by. My name is Kyle and welcome to the very first video from Belligerent Amateur Biking. Today we are gonna take a look at the brand new Kent Truvail 29 inch mountain bike. Let's do it. Real quick guys, my name is Kyle. It's great to meet you, this is my first video. I just started mountain biking about a month ago and I've absolutely fallen in love with the sport and I've actually already fallen in love with buying and modifying bicycles in that short amount of time. So the Kent True Vale has pretty much been the talk of the town since it was released. People are really amazed by the geometry. They are amazed by the hardware that comes equipped on this bike at that $398 price point. And it's a bike that eventually you will be able to go out and buy in stores at Walmart. None of the local Walmarts around me have had it in stock since it has been released. So I actually had to order mine online. When I ordered it, it said that I wasn't going to get it until July 1st, July 21st, but it showed up yesterday, July 6th. So it came super early. So if you are hesitant to order this bike because it is going to be a long wait time, well, I think that you're probably going to be in luck because mine came over two weeks early. So with that being said, this is my very first bike that I have had to assemble myself. And the way that Kent packages this bike made it extremely easy to do. I'm going to do a quick unboxing montage for you guys and let you check it out. But assembling the bike was super easy. Basically, you just had to put the seat post in the bike. You had to attach the front wheel and then attach the front brake caliper to the wheel using two hex head screws. And then you had to attach the handlebars to the stem. And that was pretty much it. You were basically ready to go at that point, air up the tires, screw in the pedals to the crankshafts, and that was all there was to it. So it was a very easy assembly out of the box. I was a little bit nervous, didn't know what I was getting into, but I knew that I kind of knew how to work on bikes already. So if you have a little bit of mechanical knowledge surrounding bikes, you should be absolutely fine putting one of these together if you don't buy it pre-assembled by Walmart in the store. So with all that being said, let's go over some of the features listed on the Kent website about this bike before we take it out and do a live ride review. Starting with the frame, the frame is listed as a lightweight, hydroformed aluminum geometry frame with tapered head tube. It seems like pretty much any bike that you're gonna buy off the Walmart rack these days that is above that like 200 to $250 price point is going to be an aluminum frame. So that is kind of standard fare, but the fact that it has the tapered head tube opens the bike up to uh, better fitment options as far as forks go. If you wanna upgrade the fork in the future, which most of these Walmart bikes, that is pretty much the first thing that people recommend upgrading is the fork. And for good reason, they are usually pretty bad. If you're taking these things on anything other than a light fire road, uh, a park trail, or a sidewalk, having that tapered head tube is really gonna open you up to some higher end and just more options overall as far as aftermarket forks go. So that is a big deal if you are someone who is looking to buy this bike to upgrade it in the future. Tapered head tube, gonna be a plus. Next up are the Nobby 29 by 2.4 CST Patrol mountain bike tires, and they have a pretty ma uh, rugged mountain bike terrain. They're not the little knobbies like you find on a lot of the Schwinns. Moving on to the crank set, we have a Pro Wheel 32 tooth alloy crank set with 175 millimeter crank arms. We will see how those 175 millimeter crank arms work with the geometry of the bike. Hopefully they're not too low, uh, so we're getting pedal strikes or getting stuck on obstacles out on the trails, but this is my first bike with 175 millimeter crank arms, so I'm kind of excited to see if they really add any sort of extra leverage to the pedaling of the bike. Moving on to the fork, we have an SR Suntour XCM with lockout and 100 millimeters of travel. Definitely excited to see a branded fork on one of these Walmart bikes as all of the Walmart bikes that I have ridden, uh, all have been Schwinn's, so all of the Schwinn Walmart bikes that I have ridden have all had Schwinn branded uh, factory forks. They don't have a, a third party branding on them. So I'm assuming with that Suntour branding on there, there'll be maybe a step up from those Schwinn forks because let's face it, the sock forks on the Schwinns that are Schwinn branded are just terrible. And of course, lockout is a welcome feature to myself because I have to ride on the road to get to the trail and I use my mountain bikes to road ride a lot. So I was happy to see a lockout on that fork. Next up, we have a deluxe MTB saddle with adjustable seat post. First impressions are the seat post and the saddle are very plain. That is okay because those are usually two of the first items that a lot of people are gonna swap out in order to save some weight and to personalize the bike. But for all intents and purposes, they are uh, matte black and they match the, uh, I guess the paint scheme of the bike just fine. 760 millimeter alloy handlebars with locking grips. Now again, the handlebars are a plain 
kind of matte black paint scheme. But honestly, the whole handlebar assembly when you get the bike out of the box is very light. I was actually pretty surprised at how light it was. So I don't know how much weight savings I'm going to have by changing those out in the future for something lighter. So they may just stay for a while. And at first glance, those uh, locking barrel grips actually feel really grippy and they fit my hand really nicely. So I don't feel like you would need to upgrade either of those from a functionality or from a weight standpoint they seem just fine out of the box but again we will see how they perform on the trail and last of the factory specs is a medium frame size now i know other reviewers who are more familiar with geometry specs have done videos on this bike so far and they have planted it firmly in the medium range i forget what the actual frame size is it's somewhere in the 16 inch range but i can honestly say as a 5 foot 10 170 pound guy I feel really, really comfortable sitting on the Kent Drew Vale. I don't feel like it's too small. In fact, I actually feel like my Schwinn Taff, my Schwinn Axum are a little bit large now that I've sat on the Kent Drew Vale. The Kent Drew Vale seems a little bit more comfortable for me, whereas those two bikes actually feel a little bit bigger now. They felt okay, but now that I've sat on a bike that I feel like fits me better with the Kent Drew Vale and that medium frame, that might be what I gravitate towards in the future is a medium frame size because it just feels right at home to me. So that is pretty much it on the spec rundown, guys. One thing I will mention is that this bike does not have any sort of internal dropper support with the routing, the internal routing of the bike. So that is a little bit of a bummer. And uh, I think most people who are going to be buying this with the intent to upgrade it are going to be looking to upgrade the brakes for sure because mechanical disc brakes, they just really don't cut it for anybody who is used to hydraulic disc brakes. So the problem with that is you are going to have to try to route that uh, hydraulic cable through the internal routing holes of the Kent True Vale. And a lot of people, when they buy these hydraulic brake setups for these budget bikes, they can buy them pre-assembled and therefore they don't have to do any of the hydraulic disc brake setup. They can literally just, you know, get it all as one unit, clamp the brake levers on the handlebar, clamp the caliber to the frame of the bike over the disc and run the cable wherever the other cable was on the bike and be good to go. Easy install. With this, you're going to have to buy those hydraulic brakes disassembled and you're going to have to assemble them and do all of the internal routing if you want to change the bike over to hydraulic brakes. So keep that in mind. Those are two downsides to me. I really wish that this bike would have come with hydraulic brakes as it was originally marketed. And now there was a little bit of an uproar around this bike. When it was first announced, it was announced with a 10 speed cassette and it was announced with hydraulic brakes. Well, it got downgraded to a nine speed cassette and mechanical disc brakes. And even though the bike bike is really, really great value spec wise for the price. That is what originally got a lot of people excited about this bike is having those two features and for those to be downgraded and cut out, a lot of people were upset. A lot of people now are not even going to buy the bike because of these emissions or these changes. So I still think that it is a great spec out for that $398 price tag. But had they included those hydraulic brakes from the factory as they had originally marketed the bike, then you really wouldn't have had to have worried about changing the brakes out pretty quickly. So. Again, we're gonna see how this thing performs on the trail. I'm going to leave all my judgment around the bike until after I get some laps in on my local trail. Now keep in mind guys, I am very new to mountain biking. I've only been riding for about a month and my local trail is pretty tame. I have pretty much conquered every little feature, I guess you could call it, that there is there. There's only a couple of very small, kind of natural jumps on the trail. And for the most part, it's just a lot of flat riding with turns and tight corners. And because it is on the edge of the lake, there are a lot of natural little cliff areas that you can kind of dive into that are a lot of fun. But it is a very, very beginner trail. I am not an advanced rider. I am not a skilled rider. So I will comment basically coming from the standpoint of somebody who just got into mountain biking and see if this Walmart mountain bike holds up for the average rider on an average trail. Because I mean, let's face it guys, that's what these bikes are made for. They are not made for people who are bombing double black diamond downhills. So uh, can this bike perform for the purpose that it was intended for? Let's take it to the trail and find out. Let's break in this Kent Truvale. Broke it out of the box. Adjusted derailleur because it was shifting a little rough. Got it dialed in really nicely now. So I'm going to send it as much as I'm physically capable of. Let's go. And I'm already falling off the bike. First jump. All right. Not bad. All right. Here we go. Let's get some speed. Tree roots. Fork actually feels quite nice. Ah. 
still need to adjust that top gear a little bit. We are cruising. Oh, spike feels a little small for a 29er. Definitely more of a medium sized frame, but with the seat up nice and high, I feel like I can maneuver this thing really well. A little tight section here. Brakes are working pretty good for mechanical disc. Oop, jump over that little baby. We've got like a 110 degree uphill turn here. Double shifts down. Handled it, no problem. No slipped gears, we're good. All right, another jump up here. See if I can actually get some air off this one. There we go, nice little bunny hop off of it. Okay, a little downhill section into a very steep climb. Let's see how it handles the climb. All right. All right, double shifts all the way down. There we go, all right, lowest gear, no problem. No problem other than I'm out of shape. All right, <laughs> get back up to speed. We've got a nice little canyon coming up here. So this one can be tough to maneuver. See how it handles it. Here we go, downhill. All right. Over the tree roots, no problem. No problem, climbing back up. Yeah, this bike feels good, man. This fork definitely heads and tails above the other big box bikes that I own. Schwinn Axum, Schwinn Taff, no contest, this cork. This fork blows them out of the water. A little down tree action, goes right over it. All right, your boy's gotta lay off the pizza. Vacation was not kind to me. There we go, let's get some speed going up. Got some roots, no problem. No problem, look at that view. Can you guys see that? It's nice out here. And I'm about to ride off the edge. Little snug point, boom, right through it. No problem. Bike corners nicely. Really no complaints so far, other than the stock pedals being terrible, as you would expect on a bike like this. Let's get some speed here. This is a fast part of the trail. We're gonna bomb it as best we can. It takes a minute to get into that top gear. There we go. I gotta adjust that when I get home. <coughs> Bug in the mouth. <laughs> About to wipe out. Tires grip great. Really a fan of these tires. Way better than the little knobbies that come on the Schwinn tap. Those are terrible for this type of stuff. Here we go. Ah, man, loving this bike. This thing's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. All right, we got another little dip coming up here. Yeah, this is a fast bike. This is a fast bike for a Walmart bike, man. This thing definitely can get some speed. Maybe my only complaint about the group set, wish it had a little bit higher teeth count on that first gear for climbing. Got another dip here. No problem. No problem. Yeah, guys, this bike rolls really, really nice. Definitely the nicest of the $400 Walmart bikes that I've had the pleasure of owning so far. Uh, heads and tails, not even a contest. This thing feels great. Okay guys, my final thoughts on the Kent Travail. Who is this bike for? Well, it's for people like me, people who are just getting started in the mountain biking world. They don't wanna go out and spend a fortune on something just to find out that they don't really like mountain biking that much or it's not something they're gonna to stick to. It gives you quality features at a great price not to mention that it's a great looking bike in general. But if you decide to stick with mountain biking, there are some easy upgrades that can be done to this bike and that we're definitely gonna do here on this channel that could really turn it into a serviceable bike for years to come. Uh, what would I change in order for this bike to be kind of, you know, average trail ready? The pedals? That's it. That's all I really think that this bike needs in order to get out there and rip around on your local trails. Now I'm not talking Black Diamond or even Blue Trails because I personally haven't even ridden trails like that yet. But for trails like I have here, general walking slash mountain biking trails that have roots in them with some big dips, with some small jumps and with some drops to flat ground. I think that this bike accomplishes all that 
with ease. I think it feels great doing so. And I really think that if that's all that you're doing with the bike, you're really not going to feel the need to upgrade the bike in any way, shape or form. So unlike something like say the Schwinn boundary, where you're probably going to want to upgrade the fork on that thing, and you're probably going to want to get a better, smoother drivetrain for $50 more, the Kent Travail does both of those things for you. And you essentially don't have to touch the bike out of the box. If you just want to get into mountain biking, it should be serviceable for you until you up, up your level of skill, until you up the level of confidence that you have in order to start trackling, trackling? In order to start tackling those rated trails. So this bike is gonna grow with the channel. I already have 100 miles on this bike. At the time of recording this video, it has been about a week and a half since I got the bike. So I'm going to do a follow-up video of how well the bike is hanging in after two weeks and after 150 miles and report back to you guys. So if you wanna see that, if you wanna see how this bike hangs long-term, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button on your way out from this video and the notification bell so you don't miss that video. And then once I hit about the 300 mile mark, we're gonna start upgrading this bike and we're going to do a whole list of things to it basically to allow the bike to grow with my skill set and to emulate how it's probably going to grow with somebody like your skill set if you're new to mountain biking I will walk you through the upgrade process. I will walk you through the items to upgrade because I've already sunk a lot of time into this new hobby, figuring out how to work on bikes myself, figuring out what parts are the parts that you should be focusing on from an upgrade standpoint, what's gonna make the most difference, what's going to offer the most bang for your buck. And I'm really looking forward to growing this channel around this bike and around the multiple other bikes that I already have in my stable that are also all budget-minded bikes that you can go and pull off the shelf at your local store. So I have been Kyle. Thank you guys so much for watching this first episode of Belligerent Amateur Biking, and we'll see you next time.